All right, well, uh, we're going to see very, very soon whether we're going to see them or see them banned as we're going to have Prisma Evolution on the purple side against White Lotus on the orange side. So I'm going to let you two take this away as you're going to take the action for game number one. Have fun, y'all. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Chef. All right, here we go, Curly. <laughs> First set of bands, and we have a Hoopa and a Lapras band. Now, I remember last time me and Chef had covered the Latin American region for the Open Series. Um, Hoopa was just such a strong Pokemon uh, for these teams. It's such a phenomenal support right now, especially ever since Comfey, um got nerfed. It definitely seems to be the more uh viable support um on the shelf right now yeah i completely agree uh i know it was a forgotten a, a little bit at the beginning when thea sky ruins was released so the fact that they have adjusted its kit to, to make it viable again you know and worthy of a ban at that uh is mm -hmm. really exciting otherwise something that we have picked up on is that it's a defender's game Slowbro, trevenant both being picked up first up we have a shifu on the side of white lotus and another defender as we were just saying the newest evolution the umbreon is being selected by God Chivo there. Yeah, really exciting to see Prisma trying out this Defender. Um, we haven't seen it in a tourney setting just yet, or at least I, I have not yet. Um, but a lot of these teams are going to start, uh, you know, practicing with it, playing it in tourneys where it is allowed. Um, so this is really, really um, exciting. Umbreon, I think, is a phenomenal Defender right now. I think, well not just defender, but support as well. The um, the mean look and the wish combo actually uh, is, uh, is a really great kit on Umbreon. It makes it a little bit more um, on the supporter side, but still capable of being able to tank and be the defender that it's meant to be. Um, yeah, super exciting to see, see this being played. Yes, me too. I mean, this is, I believe, is this the first time that we will be seeing Umbreon in action? Is that right? Oh, yes, it is the first time that we will see Umbreon in action. But I love this. The Gen 2 Evolutions, the Espeon also being picked up. Uh, so, so to see both of these Pokemon on the same side, um, not only do they look cute, but uh, they can be pretty gnarly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Prisma's team is looking a little scary there, especially with that Absol there, um, who is very capable of uh, being a great assassin in the game. You just never know where it is, and it just pops out of a bush, and then you're just knocked out. But also, White Lotus's team is looking pretty good. They got that Urshifu and the Trevenant for that uh, frontline um, disruption. They got the Gardevoir for the backline, uh, as well as the Mewtwo. This is going to be a, a really interesting match. I cannot wait to see these two comps uh, face to face. I, ha I have to do it. I'm sorry, there's no Mewtwo there, Curly. I only see a Mew. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Just uh, All right, as we get loaded into game one, we have a Prisma Evolution on the o Evolution on the purple side and a White Lotus over on the orange side. Yeah, and I would like to point out that Prisma is running those two uh, evolutions, and they're sending them into the same lane. So that is going to allow them to have a really great early game. Um, both of the evolutions here being able to evolve at level four, um, and of course they've got you know the Umbreon to be able to to frontline for that Espeon. This is going to be really exciting to watch this duo synergy between these two EVs. I completely agree. You do have Umbreon going in for the attack weight and cookie stack. So uh, making sure to get those wild Pokemons, you want to be able to get those stacks in early before you have too much in your pockets. And we are seeing the Eldegoss on White Lotus with that red buff. Now with uh, the movement slowdown already built into Eldegoss's kit, having that orange buff to also uh, be able to slow down the uh, the other team. Um, th it's going to be a very difficult lane to deal with. And here we go. We already see a knockout uh, from the Mew on the Slowbro there. Eldegoss and Mew applying so much pressure in this top lane. 
are going to be able to secure a lot of this farm here for themselves. Matter of fact, looking at the levels already, we are seeing an Urshifu on White Lotus' team already at a level 6. Yes, already at a level 6, and thankfully Ninetales was able to secure some of that farm along with the Slowbro. They have evolved, so full evolutions there for Prisma Evolution. Uh, Absol did come up for a little bit of a, a sneak attack there, um, just trying to gauge whether they can take on this Elder Goss. No, deciding to retreat on back. Uh, and let's have a look at the bottom part. We have a Shifu and a Trevenant both emptying out their pockets into uh, that pad and uh, possibly getting in some stacks if they are stacking. Yes, and we are seeing that Eeveevolution, the Espeon specifically, getting online there. It's looking like White Lotus is going to be able to get away with all of that experience there in the central area for themselves. Now, Urshifu being at level 8 here is going to be really, really scary for Prisma to have to deal with. But oh my goodness, this poor little Umbreon uh, dealing with a, a 1v4 situation here. But Umbreon is just a so, so tanky. Unfortunately, it's not able to fight a load against uh, a four-man team, but um, yeah, it, it, there, there's a lot of pressure happening down here in the spot lane. Yes, I mean, it's a, a 4v1 there up against the Espeon, but Ninetales and Slowbro have noticed this, so they are applying that pressure onto this Elder Goss, but I must say it is holding its own all by itself in this top lane. Slowbro going in for a sneaky five dunk there. The objectives have spawned, uh, so we'll wait and see what that basement Reggie is going to be. It's a Reggie Rock this time around, Curly. It is a Reggie Rock, and we already have some knockouts going down from both teams, but White Lotus is kind of holding out their own here, though this Espeon is kind of lurking here, and we know Espeon is more than capable of doing, uh, or being able to get really great secures, but the Urshifu does shut it down, so that Reggie Rock is going to go to the hands of White Lotus here. Yes, giving them that defense and special defense buff. They're going to be able to endure a lot more hits uh, and especially good against, you know, that Absol there that does that burst crit damage. But at the moment, it looks like they're just farming on up, trying to get their experience, get their Unite moves on hand before going in for the next big engage. Yes, and we are getting ready for that next big engagement here uh, for this Reggie Alecky. Both tier ones are still up, so there's not too much um, uh, priority for this Alecky, but uh, there there is a lot of pressure happening up here in this top lane. White Lotus does have the number advantage up here, uh, so they might be able to get enough KOs. We already do see the Slowbro going down the S beyond following right after so it is just the nine tails in this a top lane trying to uh trying to defend alone there's really not much that they can do here though um just trying to uh stay up there um and, and wait for their teammates to join with them so that way they can re-engage here but they're gonna have to surrender this aleki here uh aleki gonna go to white lotus and we'll see if they're gonna apply some pressure here I must say, I absolutely love what White Lotus did there. They split their resources, made sure to just apply that pressure on that T1 pad and allow those backliners to secure themselves that Reggie Lecky. Mind you, it didn't end up getting too far as a Prisma Evolution was there to deal with it, take it down, and now they're going to turn the tables and push this tier one pad, possibly. No, it looks like they are going to retreat as they do not have enough resources on hand as a Shifu comes in from the back line and is wiping them out one by one. Three KOs are coming from White Lotus. It's going to allow them to be able to freely score there in the top lane and completely break that top tier one. Now there is a, I believe that was a Reggie Steel in the bot lane, but Prisma Evolution having a really great positioning. But White Lotus is moving in. Will they be able to rip this in time? And it is a nine tails with the Reggie Steel secure, but there is going to be a huge fight here going on. We do see the slow bro beam, uh, the slow bro slow beam going out as well as the absolute unite move. Um, Gardevoir, Fairy Singularity popping off and able to get a whole entire team wipe. Prisma Evolution just went down.
a little bit of a revenge segment there on the side of White Lotus. That guard of all with the huge fairy singularity to catch them out, wipe them out for a full team wipe. You know, despite getting uh, the experience from the Reggie Steel, that has just given White Lotus a ton of experience on their side. So not too much of a loss of that objective. Yeah, I'm looking at their levels. White Lotus is doing very, very well. Of course, it is the first level 13 uh, Urshifu and Gardevoir on White Lotus's team. Uh, first two level 13s, there's a huge fight popping off here, though, and Prisma Evolution is going down again. They might actually be able to get a whole nother team wipe. Umbreon being the fourth KO. Trevenant and Eldegoss trying to apply pressure together while uh, the, the backliners uh, take this Reggie Alecki for themselves completely uncontested. Yes, and now that is going to march its way down to that tier two pad with oh, still 55 seconds left to go. I believe Prisma Evolution are going to have to deal with this. You do not want it going in and the chance for that tier two pad to be broken and home base wide open. So while the Gen 2 Evolutions are on the job to deal with it, we do have White Lotus making sure to just steal that experience from uh, Prisma Evolution central area there. And there is another Reggie spawning, but I don't think there's going to be enough time. Um, right now, both teams don't... I mean, granted, White Lotus can probably do whatever they want here, but Prisma Evolution definitely does not want to put themselves any further behind White Lotus. So them going for this objective might not be wise. They might be coming down here just to try to get some, some, uh, some vision uh, on White Lotus. They might be able to get some KOs. Mew getting the secure on their Reg Eyes and Absol... Uh, utilizing their Unite move was a really interesting choice there. Um, unfortunately, though, we are seeing Prisma Evolution team members going down the Slowbro, the Espeon, and now the Absol, and soon to be the Umbreon at 1 HP. And wow, it, it is practically another team wipe uh, coming from White Lotus on Team Prisma Evolution. They're going to start uh, wrapping around this Aleki and preventing any members from Prisma Evolution from trying to attempt a sneaky steal here. Well, we did have the Espeon trying to use their Psy Shock, but unfortunately the Regil, uh, the Rayquaza wasn't low enough there. And with the Ashifu on its tail, it ended up pretty much uh, getting taken down straight away, giving White Lotus the chance to secure, get those Rayquaza shields and uh, Prisma Evolution knowing that they can't do much considering these full pockets that are running at them. Uh, looks like Gardevoir was uh, cheering for that win there. <laughs> <laughs> that Gardevoir was vibing, that's for sure. That was a really interaction to watch there. Uh, well, unfortunately, I mean, it was really exciting to see Umbreon. I don't think Umbreon was really the issue. I know Umbreon is a really great defender, but unfortunately, Prisma Evolution was not able to win with that Umbreon. White Lotus was just so disruptive with that Urshifu and, and the, the synergy coming from the Trevenant and the Eldegoss in their front line. Um, wow, just an incredible plays coming from White Lotus's team there. And looking at the damage to the Mew, the Gardevoir, the Urshifu, both of those really strong carries doing the most damage. Oh, all right, well, let's get this uh, second match. Uh, rolling as we wait for the first bans. Now, obviously, we did have that Lapras and the Hooper ban last game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether they stick with these same bans or whether they're going to select something new that they thought was a bigger threat. And it looks like the Urshifu oh. was a bigger threat than uh, the Hooper, along with Slowbro, which means Lapras does get yes. to be picked up this time around. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can, you're I very happy about that. <laughs> so, so excited. I love seeing Lapra. Like, look at its face. It's just it's so wholesome <laughs> and so cute. I cannot wait to to watch that Lapras at play. I'm excited to see um, what they end up pairing it with. Um, oh, oh, that's that's a decision. Mammo. Yeah, I, I was going to say about Mammo. 
Looks can be deceiving on that, Lapras. Um, but yeah, you can definitely... I think Mamoswine is one that you don't see very often being picked up uh, in tournament mode. I, I know you're a lover of, of <laughs> Mamoswine. How, I guess, how do you feel, I, I guess, about this double stacking focus ban uh, being on the field? I am a huge Mammo fan and I love the build. However, I just... I feel like Mammo is such a hard Pokemon to play right now, especially in the defender realm. When you, you know, look at Lapras and the sustain and the damage and the CC that it has, uh, it's just one of the many defenders that I feel like outplays um, the Mammo Swine. Um, we're also seeing a, uh, a Machamp with Muscle Band and Leftovers, but I'm guessing they're going to swap that Machamp with, with a different player that does have a better... Um, ideal build. I mean, unless, you know, Muscle Band Leftovers Machamp is a, is a new meta. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Look, if there is a time to try anything, new Pokemon, new builds, new team compositions, it's definitely over at Unite Battle Hub, uh, as we did mention earlier. And I guess that's the brilliance with this pick band draft is you want to secure uh, those mons that I, I guess you predict the other team might pick up or, or anything like that first up. So whether they will end up switching it over, no, they haven't switched it over. I was going to say they might end up switching it over with somebody else that, that would be running it. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, another threat. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. See? We, we predicted it. Okay. Uh, another threat that I spy <laughs> on the field is this Dodrio. Um, so I, I know in previous uh, tournaments, Dodrio is one to also sometimes get banned. Uh, I think the ability to get into that back line that uh, Gardevoir is definitely going to be have to be careful. But you know what? We have a double freeze. Nine tails and Mamoswine here. Oh, okay. So, you know, maybe with the Mamo and the nine tails together um, with that CC, maybe they're going to be able to pull something off. Um, but yeah, going back to the, to the Mammo combo that we were having, um, there, there's just so many better defenders right now that sus that actually sustain and Mammo just doesn't have any sustain at all. And it's close range too. So, um, it can easily be taken down. Um, but we'll just have to see these are, you know, competitive players. Um, so it's definitely going to be much different than what we see, what we experience, um, on the, on the ladder in rank. Um, but yeah, super excited to see a, a Lapras. Any other picks? I know you were talking about the Dodrio. Um, I, I think since Urshifu was banned, that's definitely another uh, great pick for them to pick up since they can't pick up the Urshifu. Um, but like, are there any other picks here that really stand out to you? Uh, Venusaur. I feel like Venusaur is another one that we haven't really seen very often uh, being picked up uh, in a tournament. So I am interested to see whether this will go uh, Giga, Giga Drain Petal Dance or whether it will end up going the, the Beamasaur, uh, which I feel like is becoming recently very popular. Um, but if we do have a look in that top path, we we're just talking about that. The, the double freeze lane can just provide so much CC and going up against a Dodrio, um, you know, if they're able to just shut it down early uh, and, you know, deny it from, from getting its evolution, uh, this will be very, very good for the side of Prisma Evolution. Yes, Mammal Swain has such a great early game in the laning phase, so I really do think that those two up top will be able to hopefully apply a lot of pressure in that top lane and be able to um, do what they want to do with this uh, with this duo um, that they have up here in this top lane. It's looking like uh, Curlia is up in the top lane. Uh, both uh, central area uh, mons are in the top lane, actually. Not sure who was able to secure most of that central farm there. Um, but levels are looking very even here. We got some fours, we got some fives. Um, so we're starting to get those power spikes online there. And I know we did see White Lotus getting a KO on the little Machop a little bit ago. Um, so yeah, just... It, it, wow, that that is a perfect example of the pressure that Mammo can apply in that early game. Um, so that was a really good pick coming from the Mammo there.
Yes, definitely a good pick. And you know what? With the Dodri down for a little bit, it doesn't, I don't know. Uh, it does waste a little bit of time, but it does look like it was able to pick up some wild Pokemon over in their central area and it has now grown another head and become a Dodrio. Uh, we do have a Sludge Bomb Venusaur that has uh, come on out. Mew and Venu do manage to pick up all of those Wobblies in Alteria that did spawn in that uh, central area. And it looks like they are going up for a uh, four man push up in the top path. Yes, huge push up there. We did see a couple of KOs uh, going down there, um, but not much pressure happening here anymore. Uh, it's looking like Prisma Evolution kind of backed off of that. They had to. They lost. Uh, they lost a few teammates, um, but they they're doing really well trying to protect that tier one. Um, they definitely know their limits. They're playing very patiently up here in this top lane. Not really uh, overextending too much. Oh, but unfortunately, we do see the Palace Wide going down by the hands of that Bima Sword, which we are starting to see a lot of lately. Yes, and you can definitely see why just having that Sludge Bomb go on down and then the Beam, uh, it can dish out quite some damage and you pair that up with the Mew as well. Uh, quite insane and you know what? The benefits of Hoopa. They were all up in the top path and the ability to just take that hyperspace hole bus down into that bottom path, secure themselves an objective, take a pad as well. And it looks like uh, they are continuing on to that tier two, but it has provided Prisma Evolution uh, that space up in that top path to take down that tier one and possibly take this Reggie Alecki to pressure that tier two. I think that was definitely a good call from White Lotus. They're pressing their advantage there on that tier two because um, they knew that they would be able to fulfill what they were trying to do and be able to get back to that tier two to defend against the Reggie Alecki. Um, and we see that at play here. They're taking care of the Alecki and they're also being able to do other stuff on the map like Dodrio taking the buffs from Prisma Evolution as well as getting some really high tier picks on that guard board. Yes, definitely. That's what I was talking about. Just the speedy bird is able to get into, you know, those squishies and take them down. Now, one thing I am worried about on the side of Prisma Evolution is the fact they still have that Pylo Spine. Uh, and I guess that's that's what we were saying earlier in terms of this defender, the fact that it does have those three evolutions uh, that it needs to reach. It needs to get uh, that experience somehow. It needs to evolve and, um, you know, hopefully it'll be able to become that Mamo uh sooner than later yes the mid game for pilo swine is a little bit on the rough side hopefully it'll have a little bit of a better late game and i'm just saying that because i'm a full believer of mammoth swine it just does not feel good in this current meta when there's so many other dominating defenders that actually have great sustain like this lapras here we see them in their unite move uh, looking like they were just trying to create some space, and that's what I really love about Lapras, is it plays very similar to a Water Spout Rapid Spin Blastoise, just the way that it can create space for their teammates is the same the same kind of behavior that we see um, from uh, from a Blastoise. Now we are seeing the Gardevoir Fairy Singularity going out, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to get the secure. It's a Dodrio getting the secure on the bottom Reggie, as well as another pick on the Gardevoir for VPN there. Yes, and look at that, the Hooper coming on out using that bus along with the Rings Unbound to take down the Ninetales. And now White Lotus have the optimal positioning to take this Reggie Alecki, uh, leaving that to the double beams there while the other three go and push this tier one, just distract them a little bit, create some space uh, and possibly push this forward. And Lapras here just sustaining so well again, showing why it is such a great defender. Now, Mamo was able to take down the Lapras and they are able... Oh, I was going to say they're able to keep this Regieleki from their tier one, but I was completely wrong. Oh my goodness, this Venusaur is so disgusting in a good way. Very, very <laughs> amazing plays there coming from that Venusaur. I, yeah, I definitely agree. That Verdant Anger was beautiful. The ability to just knock them out and um, use that beam with as that follow-up to, to finish the job. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, maybe is this why uh, we are seeing Beamasaur come into play as of as of recently? Uh, I feel like it's it's not something you you used to see in the previous meta, but it's definitely picking up popularity. Yeah, I think these long range attackers are just doing so well right now in the current meta. You got Nine Tails, you got Gardevoir, you got Mew, Espeon. Venusaur, just a lot of really, really great long range attackers. And that's the cool thing about Venusaur. The Giga Drain, the Pedal Dance build is really great as well, but also having that option of going long range with that beam is uh is really incredible i love when pokemon have uses for both of their kits and i think that's what makes venusaur a really great pokemon but we're definitely seeing that Venusaur really shine through in this current meta yes now the question is are they going to be able to shine through here with those beams taking down the sv on there we have a slow snow globe coming out from nine tails it is super duper low trying to get those stuns but we do have some shields coming on out with that mammoth mash uh, a huge surf from the mu champ is using the unite did end up missing their blow on the reggie rock uh is this going to create enough space and time no we have four members of prisma evolution that are down Reggie Rock did not get secured, and once again, like last time, it's only the Espeon left standing. See, this is why you have to be so careful about going for that last objective before the raid, because it can actually cost you the raid. Now, granted, Prisma Evolution is lucky that White Lotus didn't turn on that raid and just rip it when they had four down. Uh, I think they fully trust their capabilities of being able to defend this Ray. Um, maybe even take on another fight and get a whole team wipe and then take Ray. But we will see this Gardevoir is a little bit chunked here. Same with the Ninetales. We do have two KOs on the Machamp and the Espeon here. Uh, this is just White Lotus's map here. They are playing it how they want. They are everywhere where they need it to be. Uh, they are creating so much space, preventing Prisma Evolution from making a move here. Yeah, they're not allowing them to get into that pit. They have all co bases covered here, not even letting them enter in through that Choco. Now, Machamp did dive in deep, but that was a dangerous play as it ended up getting knocked out straight away and it left the Ninetales all alone, uh, allowing it to be prey towards that Dodrio. Uh, Espeon also gets knocked down. Gardevoir trying to kite back away, but it wasn't enough. Now, we do have that Mamre Swine that has spawned it up. It does have a tonight, but you know what? Rayquaza has been secured. It has been locked down, and that means Prisma Evolution is going to go in with a Surrender. And White Lotus taking the second win of the series here. White Lotus will be moving on. Prisma Evolution, unfortunately, will not be proceeding forward. Um, but it, it was it was a nice try. I, I think it was a little bit of a struggle with the Mammo and the Machamp there. Um, they didn't really have a strong front line. And, of course, that's going to make... Uh, it's going to make their back line have a really tough time being able to carry out their job as well. So I, I think the comp was just a little bit rough for Prisma. Um, White Lotus, the way that they drafted their their comp was just, uh, was just better. Um, we see why Lapras is, is uh, always a band so often. It's just, it's such a disruptive mon. Again, it plays like that Water Spout Rapid Spin Blastoid. It's able to create so much space. It pushes the enemy team back away from whatever it is that the team is trying to do. Um, so just incredible plays coming from White Lotus. Um, the choice of Pokemons were, were great and they definitely played it very, very well.